Hello, riders and not. Today I am with Tom, because actually taller than me. I know. That, that's, like, that's quite rare. <laughs> is it? Isn't that's it? Yeah, yeah, it's quite very rare for me. <laughs> I like it when, I, when it? I do experience that, though. When you experience somebody taller? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good feeling. It makes you feel normal. <laughs> with Tom, who has a brand. I do, A yeah. clothing brand. It's not motorcycle clothing, it's more like, because um, it's not protective. No, yeah. no. I think we kind of say it's inspired by motorcycles and cars, you know, inspired by machine. Um, so I guess, you know, because we're so into that stuff, it makes sense to make clothing that is inspired by that as well. So yeah, we don't do protective. <laughs> you see, you're very into that stuff. Mm. So all of this is not yeah. the decoration. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, basically we, we started a clothing brand um, and it was almost just an opportunity to try and get a warehouse that we could then put cars and bikes in there really. So. Uh, that's where we make money and I crammed that all into the tiniest bit and when we put all of our printing stuff at the top people were like isn't it going to be really hard to carry everything upstairs like yes but I can't take bikes upstairs <laughs> so we need to get that out of the way so we have as much space down here to, to have all this wonderful stuff that inspires what goes on up there. I don't even know where to start. To start mm. from downstairs or to start from yeah, upstairs? Sure. Because both, both, both are very exciting. First mm. of all, you make everything yourself from, from like um, working on the cars mm. and more building motorcycles yep. to going upstairs and printing your own yeah, clothing. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think the same kind of um, ethos applies to both really. And, you know, whilst it looks like this is a, a professional garage, it's not, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a, a bike builder in, in the same way that someone like um, Simon at Mint is, He's, you know, he is a, a professional engineer. I'm not, I'm a shed builder. I just happen to have a big shed. Um, <laughs> and it's kind of the same that we, you know, for us, it's the journey, it's the process. It's not just about the end product. You know, I, would, I don't think I'd ever just go and buy a completed motorcycle. Um, I would want to, you know, see it through and make it my own. I think our clothes is the same kind of thing, really, rather than just having someone make them in a faceless factory somewhere. We want to see that from the kind of design through to the production all, all in-house here. That's important to us. The reason, guys, I decided to do a vlog about Voice of Bedford is because of a story. It's not the advertising campaign. You don't have to go on the website <laughs> if you don't want to, yeah. and you don't have to check Boyd's clothing. Mm. But it's, I found your story very inspiring oh, because so many people start a motorcycles inspired clothing mm, t-shirt line mm -hmm. and they stop mm, mm. how did you manage to make it successful you've been to the bike shed show yeah, this year. yeah yeah so we were at bike shed this year and and that felt like a real um uh big thing for us you know that was a, a big aspirational thing so to, to achieve that was you know it felt like a, a big step but yeah you know I think that's that's really fair um, and, and understandably I think a lot of people whatever they do will um, go actually you know it seems quite straightforward to design a t-shirt print a t-shirt and put it out there and I can sell those and and um, you know that bit is easy you know and I think um, for us so much of it is about everything that goes on around the actual act, you know, activity of selling clothing and you know and it is about authenticity but we host bike meets and we put on shows and and the big thing for us was if we're going to effectively try and make money out of the motorcycle community we need to make sure we're giving something back to the motorcycle community which is exactly what we do with our meets and our shows and 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 also supporting other shows as well you know we turn up to you know as many of the, the, the shows as we, we possibly can and trade I, at I those. I think you had 101, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, Kickback, yeah, and yeah. that's where we met at 101, I think, yes. or, or Kickback, uh, I I think think one of them. The first Kickback we met, I think, and then, yeah, and then we saw each other at 101, and then, yeah, and then again at Kickback, yeah, and then yeah, Bike Shed. the so Bike Shed, everywhere, few, yeah, yes. yeah. First time, I mm. thought you were boys of Bedford, because, yeah. like, it was two boys I know. at the show, and I thought, like, boys of lot. Bedford. Yeah, it happens a lot, and people also think I'm called Boyd as well, that's the other thing that happens um, which is fine like I respond to anything really but yeah my name is actually Tom and Boyd is my wife's maiden name so it's a oh. 
Oh, it was, okay. um, it just rolled off the tongue nicely, Boyd's of Bedford. And, you know, I think the other thing that when we started the business, certainly we, we wanted to be grounded in a community, not just the motorcycling community, but also we wanted to be a, a, a Bedford business. So I think there is, you know, whilst most of our trade now comes from the motorcycling community, both in the UK, but also internationally, there is also people within Bedford who really like the fact that we are, you know, flying the flag for, for Bedford. And whilst a lot of our branding now is just Boyd's and that's as a result of our customers just referring to us as Boyd's. So we kind of just dropped it a little bit. We're still very proud of our location and, and showing off what this town has to offer as well. Hello. And what do you have here? So we are uh, Boyds of Bedford. Um, we, uh, yeah, we do handmade apparel. So everything is made by hand, screen printed by hand. Here in UK. By hand. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, in in Bedford. So a couple of hours from here. But yeah, so that's that's what we do, and we host monthly bike meets and um, yeah, try and get out to shows like this as much as we possibly can as well. Do you have a shop? We do. So we have currently we're online, and then we're going to like every single chopper show you can think of this year. So you'll see us a lot of places. We used to have a shop, but unfortunately, um, COVID hit us really badly and, and we had to close our shop. But we are currently building a new workshop and print works that we'll probably be hosting some open evenings and stuff like that out. But um, yeah, we've got like a little big, well, little big garage that we keep all our bikes and cars in and a separate print works whereas we're putting them together so i'll be able to screen print some t-shirts and then at the end of the day go and tinker on a motorcycle yeah 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 which because that's the problem it's like trying to find time to do both when they're separate but put them together and i will hopefully get a bit of better balance yeah. i am in both mm -hmm. i was in fashion and mm. then motorcycles mm. and this is why for me it's so fascinating how both of that works mm. together how mm. how that transfers from making clothing yeah. sewing to making motorcycles cycles yeah. and, and and working on cars and it actually can work together i actually can remember the point that was almost the nexus or the starting point of boyd's or where i really realized like you say put those two passions together there was a show called it's called like the winter chill or something like that it was something that urban rider did years ago and me and Dan went down to it um, in like Shoreditch Market or something. And you had like Hedden were there, Bike Shed were there, Rebels Alliance were there as they were then. And there was a barber there, there was a tattooist there. There's all those things there. And the, obviously the thing that brought everyone together was motorcycles. But the, the other thing that was common throughout all those people was an interest in design. You know, you could see by the way people were dressed. You could see by the, the, the motorcycles that were there that it, it was a design thing. And, and you know, motorcycling is a, is a very broad church from people who ride motorcycles for transport as their daily, you know, to get from A to B, right the way over to people who, who it's, it's an art form, you know, and it's, you know, perhaps doesn't get ridden that much, but they, there's that, that person loves motorcycles just as much as, as this person, or maybe indeed more, you know, if it's just your, transport then perhaps it's you don't have that same kind of heart in in motorcycles as i do but yeah like you say the the link between passion for design um and and motorcycles is 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 really strong and i think they they sit really well together and that's probably why I'm, i have have more of a preference for stuff like choppers because they are a big exaggeration of that you know often putting form before function and um it doesn't work for everyone but like the 101 run, the bikes there are just like incredible. Like yes. what, you know, some incredible stuff. Are you coming stuff, this year? I will be, yeah, we'll be okay, there, yeah, down by the beach. So yeah, check, I think it's sometime in July, isn't it? But yeah. Yeah, it's the same week as uh, Goodwood. Yeah. I hope so I can come because I have to be at Goodwood. So I hope uh, I can the, combine both. This year more than ever, it feels like that there's, there's lots of events going on, you know, and we've got our own one um, on the 1st of July, which, you know, that, that all was, was typically last minute um, from Boyd to just go, oh, sod it, let's do a summer event. Cause it's been one of those things that people have asked us to do for ages. And we looked at the diary and you go, oh, well, you've got, you know, we've got another kickback. There's the 13 counties. We've got um, uh, Dragstalger, which is a big one for us with, for hot rods as well. And what else? Oh, the 
uh, crazy horse are doing their event and you kind of go, wow, there's, there's a, 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 a great selection of events. So we managed to squeeze, squeeze one in. in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'll be at that event. So yeah. if you are local or mm. not that much local, mm. still you are invited on Saturday, the 1st of July mm -hmm. to come to, where is it? It's in a place called Kiso, which is just outside of Bedford. Yeah, so just up the road from where we are now. Yeah. It's a beautiful place, mm. quite fancy as well. Very fancy, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. I'll be there with mm. Jonesy and with April probably as well as well as Simon with a range of motorcycles yeah. because that that event you do combined with Mint Customs aren't you? Yes that's correct yeah so Simon uh, such a great guy um, and a big thing for me you know when when we're looking at putting on a show there's a lot of boring admin that has to go on and um, and Simon's so well connected and, and knows motorcycles really well so I just kind of said to him look can you kind of take care of the, the, the motorcycle element and, and curating that a bit so I can just focus on all the boring stuff like risk assessments and everything that has to go <laughs> yeah. on in the back unfortunately but you know again this show is is about us trying to give something back um, it's it's five pounds in advance if you get an advance ticket that would really help because then we can know how many people are coming or seven pounds on the on the gate we really try and make it the accessible cheapest chip. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's really just to, to pay back to yeah, like, the to, place and it's the, to pay for the, the yeah security we have to have a paramedic on site we have to have a pa it's to pay for all that stuff really so we all that money that comes in we just dump it back on the show itself yes so this, this is um yeah, this is, I guess, where the, the real magic happens and you can kind of see, I've crammed it into as small a space as possible so there's more room for uh, cars and bikes. But um, yeah, everything we do is using traditional screen printer techniques and we use water-based inks as opposed to something called Plastisol, which a lot of businesses use, which is a plastic-based ink. So if you're wearing a T-shirt or something, if you kind of put your hand across the print on it, um, what we do is we try and make it as soft as possible to touch, um, whereas with Plastisol you will feel like a... And you've got yeah. an eye in it. Yeah, exactly. So, that, so they tend to deteriorate more. And a big thing, uh, you know, again, in, in what we're trying to do with boys is almost make our clothing really hard wearing so you can wear it down there when you are building stuff and you can throw it in the wash and it'll be fine. Um, where, because I think we've probably all had those t-shirts that have shrunk up or, or the print has come off and all those kind of things and it's we one of the things is we call it slow fashion so it's kind of like it's something that's going to last for a long time as opposed to something that you wear three or four times and then chuck in the bin. This is my screen printing carousel um, which is yeah it's it's a really um, not a particularly good one none of this equipment is good I, I got it all second hand um, I decided on a whim to just start screen printing stuff and I bought it all in one go for like 1200 quid I think really? something like that yeah oh yeah which is, uh, which is mad and I've gradually upgraded a couple of bits but pretty much we're still on the same stuff we started with but I can do up to four colours here um, and you can see there's four platens so you can kind of spin mm. them around and print them and behind you there's a dryer there um, the washout booth over here and that's kind of... Where you expose your screens? Oh, through here. Come into the... Uh, come so into... So I will explain a little bit. So yeah. all these nice drawings mm -hmm. needs to be put it on the screen mm -hmm. and needs to be what we call exposed. That's correct, so yeah. like the screen is blocked over here mm -hmm. and here the paint goes through mm -hmm. when you use a... How, how do you call it? Squidgy. Squidgy. I mm -hmm. thought that's the right one. Yeah. This is one. Mm -hmm. When you use a squidgy, Mm -hmm. and just push the paint through mm -hmm. and it squeezes through the white bits mm -hmm. and that's how you get a picture mm. and to get one color it's easier because <laughs> yeah. when you get something complicated like that which is three colors mm -hmm. you need to line up perfectly every single print mm -hmm. and it is very complicated how much is that jumper that one we sell for i think it's 45 I want to say maybe 40. So That's imagine the amount of <laughs> handwork at Bedford yeah. in the in, in UK made in UK yeah, yeah. that goes into that and the only reason they can keep costs down because you only can buy stuff that they make mm. at 
Boyd's yeah, website or yeah. uh, directly from Boyd's yeah. and that is eliminates any extra cost that you would pay for mm -hmm. any other retailers with, which would put like 60% on the top. Yeah, exactly. And I think like if you think about there's some great moto brands who do similar kind of stuff so focus on the power. So you have someone like Kaitone who are a French brand, Age of Glory, I think they might be French as well, Fuel. Um, Eudoxy for the ladies, um, Wild Dust, there's some really great brands and then obviously they're European so then you have to pay import duty and stuff like that because that's one of the things people ask a lot is why is your stuff cheaper than theirs? It's like well we do it all in house and we do it in the UK so we don't have to pay import and you know again people would say well actually you could charge more for that and we want people to wear our stuff. Do you know what I mean? We, we, we aren't about trying to absolutely rinse the motorcycle community as much as we possibly can, as long as we can um, have this place to build our bikes and, and means people can afford our stuff. That's important to us, you know, to, that it's, you know, like I said, we're, we're just nice people. We're just nice people. So yeah, it's not the most glamorous place in, in the world. We built all this on a shoestring using materials that we reclaimed. And actually when we took over this place, um, we were very lucky to get it and the reason we got it is because the people at it previously were growing drugs in here. Oh, okay. So it really yeah. smelled strongly. Do you still strongly. have some left? No, I'm afraid not. We smoked no? it all. That was okay. one hell of a night. So this is my office, which is a dump, but you can immediately feel how it's like insulated in here where they would grow um, their drugs in here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do you know how police finds the lofts where the drugs go mm. grows? In winter when it snows, those roofs are not covered yeah, yeah, in snow exactly. because they are warm. Yeah, well, they actually hear the people next door smelt it. and uh, But it's happened twice here. The people before that, the police came and kicked the door in, but um, the, really? the landlords caught them here. So, so this is the exposure unit. So like you say, you get a screen. Here's a blank screen here, actually. Um, yeah. As uh, Demante was saying, you coat this screen with a photosensitive emulsion. Then you will lay on a an acetate or your design like this and then you basically put it in here and blast UV light at it for 10 minutes or whatever it is and then you then wash it off and the bits that were masked sorry the bits that were masked off by that will then wash out and the rest will stay on um, and it's yeah it's a very satisfying sort of process and and then you end up let me just uh, turn the light on in here but again this was another um yeah, so this is again a lovely drugs room, but um, this is my sort of screen library. So there's, you know, f f hundreds of them now, because um, I don't throw anything away, <laughs> um, which I really should um, get rid of them sometimes. But it means that if I ever decide to resurrect one of our old designs, I could just go and get it off the shelf, and and um, and that's something people often ask me to do. So. If there's an old boy's design you want back, then uh, yeah, nag me about it because it's probably still in there somewhere. cool about screen printing is it's kind of half a commercial process you know you are effectively well not mass producing something but producing something in bulk but also like you say it's still a it's still very artistic it's still you know you're producing something I could screen print prints and stuff like that it's it's kind of, so it's kind of the perfect balance between art and you know production in a way that's what I really love about it I love this absolutely love it for so many reasons first reason is because it is so related with a real motorcycle community mm. Mm. and mm. you are into it you are yourself doing it mm -hmm. and you are into it mm. lots of brands using motorcycles as a just using mm. using motorcycle yeah. community to sell whereas mm. you are in it mm.
Yeah, you know, I think like and it's not even just motorcycle businesses that do that. If you look at, um, you know, I will get people messaging me going, oh, I saw a, a, a T-shirt with a Harley on it in Tesco's. Do you know what I mean? And it's and they'll send it to me, and I'm like, cool, but. If, if you buy that, none of that money is going back to people who actually maintain and build that stuff and keep it on the road. And they do the same with another one of my passions is, is old, old Volkswagens. And it's the same, like you get, you know, stuff with camper vans on them in H&M. And it's like, that's cool. And you can buy that and it'll show that you like campers, but none of that money is going to go back to the, the poor sods like me who actually drive the stuff and break down on the side of the road yeah, and actually yeah. keep the things alive. And I think, again, for us, it's, it's this virtuous circle that if we take like I say take something from the community we give something back we hope that you will invest something in our products and what we do with that money is we keep this place running but also like I say we have the meat like we're going to have tonight and hopefully there'll be 400 bikers who you know only a tiny fraction of those people will actually come and buy anything from us but they'll still be there connecting socializing getting out of the house and 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 we get to see all of their beautiful riding. machines and riding and indeed, bringing yeah. the bikes to show yeah. that once they build through the winter yeah, and yeah. want to show off oh, and yeah, it's yeah. a very lovely community to be in Definitely. simon's coming as well so if, mm. if you are again if you are local or not that much local mm -hmm. if you are happen to be in the area on first first wednesday, wednesday of the month, of yeah. the month mm -hmm. during the season at the brew Brew Point. Point, yeah. So there's a brewery um, called Brew Point, uh, which again is a bed for business. Although it looks huge, it's actually still a locally owned business, which is amazing. And yeah, so they have obviously they have beer, so you can have one, but they also have non alcoholic beer, which helps. In fact, it was at one of our meets, they did one of our first meets, they did the taste testing for the non alcoholic beer. So our customers helped to develop their non-alcoholic beer oh, lovely yeah so they have that and then they have you know two for one pizzas their pizza pizzas are very good we have a strong italian community in bedford and you can't get away with bad so bad if you pizzas. turn up with ducati that's yeah. an extra point oh absolutely yeah i yeah, turned yeah. up with ducati but it's in the van yeah, that's, yeah, you should have the back doors open or something. You yeah, know. I should just bring my gear and yeah. get it, roll it over. It, and it's, you know, do you know what? Meeting. It's it, 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 it's it's crazy when um, Italy, very sadly for me, beat England in the Euro finals down the embankment, which is a beautiful river in Bedford. It's like you know the Italian community all comes together and and it's it's huge. It's it, it's amazing. Uh, it's great, and again, it means that we've got great food and a really rich culture. In Bedford, that's it's why I I've been here for twelve years now. I didn't grow up here, but I really feel like home here. Like you said, printing a t-shirt is pretty easy. Printing loads of t-shirts is hard. Like anyone can print one. Um, Cause there's something called flooding the screen. So you, if you put the ink on the screen, you kind of draw it across the design to, to load it with ink. And then you put the t-shirt down and then you pull it across and then that's the print, take it off, put it on the dryer and then you flood the screen again. That's the bit that people cock up because if you, and it's such, it's almost so hard to describe, but you need to float the ink across this so that it doesn't go through the screen, um, but put enough pressure on it that it stays in there. And as soon as you put the slightest bit too much pressure, it blows through. Actually, here's a great example. This red t-shirt here, this was the first t-shirt I ever printed. <gasps> That was the very, very first prints that we did. Um, and I've still got the screen somewhere. Um, and to illustrate perfectly what I was just telling you, that was the first one. The second one was here. Yeah. <laughs> you can see that, that I then, exactly. the second time, put too much pressure on it, blew too much ink through it. And in fact, these yeah. are all, whilst they're, they're good examples, they're, this is like the rogues gallery of stuff that I've slightly cocked up up here. But it, it just shows you some of the stuff we do. We're, we're really lucky to work with some cool local businesses. Um, Foxy Wings are a bed for business run by some of my friends and so I print stuff for them, uh, which is something we really enjoy as well. Like I say, we're very proud of, of where, we, where we come from. The aim of this episode 
is the aim of all the episodes is mm. to show you how amazing the motorcycle community is that mm. I discovered and um, mm. I have a privilege to visit people like you oh, and get an interview from you mm. and share your story all the money he earns by selling t-shirts <laughs> goes downstairs to that yeah. garage to rebuild all these cars mm -hmm. and uh, bikes and mm. building choppers and it all goes back into yeah. motorcycles mm -hmm. So that's... Yeah, I've never paid myself incredible. a penny from Boyd's, you know. So people often say that to me. It's like, oh, you know, you know someone said, oh, what's it like to have a successful business? I don't, I don't think it's a successful business because I don't pay myself with it yet. I still have to scrape a living and, um, you know, I sort of print stuff for other people or do a bit of kind of consultancy work on the side, and, and uh, which is great. And it, again, it enables me um, to do this. You know, we had a real tough time uh, when we first started, we used to have a shop and a cafe and that all kind of, um, during COVID, went, we went out, Boyd ceased to exist. We went out of business. And I think it, um, through that, like a lot of people, we had this realization about what was important to us and, and why we do it. And, and it is, it's a lifestyle choice, right? Do you know what I mean? I don't know, we're not doing this because we want to make money out of it. We're doing it to allow us to continue to express our passion and to meet excellent people and hopefully put something back into the, the community that we love, for sure. I think this is amazing that you realized that in life, it's not earning money mm. that is important. Mm. It's the experiences you have. Yeah. And having the experience of mm. earning to have an experience, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's the way to live. The yeah, best yeah. way that you have no regrets afterwards, that you wasted your days mm. on doing something you hate mm -hmm. just to earn the money. It's a lot to learn here. It's a very yeah. good life lesson. Yeah, I, 100%. And I think, it's it i think it was a, a, a transformative experience for everyone for that kind of couple of years when um the world came to a stop and um it damaged us really significantly um my wife has a, a business a wedding business and like naturally that disappeared completely and um coming off the back of it and we had to close our shop and close our cafe and that was devastating and 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 all of that if anyone's been following us for a couple of years that was all very public so <laughs> the failure or my failure as a business person all happened online in front of people, which sucked, to be honest with you. It was really, really rubbish. And, and one of the things I get asked most of all is what, you know, when are you going to open another shop? When are you going to open another cafe? And, 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 and my response is, I don't think we will. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I think we now know that we are, we're a clothing brand, you know, we're not a cafe and, um, it's allowed us to focus on what's important to us and be a better version of Boyd's than the Boyd's that was trying to make coffees for people badly. Well, no, actually the coffee was good, the latte art was bad. Um, <laughs> and, you know, try and do everything. And I think that that's a, a big lesson. And, and I think also when we talk about, there's lots of people who want to start brands, whether it's auto, you know, moto related or, or whatever your passion is. It's like, you know, that's, there's obviously there's an opportunity there to, to do that and people have made successful livings out of it but it's to really focus on what what you're doing and what you what you do well i think a lot of people if they are a bike builder will go okay cool well i'll do some t-shirts and and that's fine you know you know i think people want to support businesses but then to take that on to this the point of being a clothing brand as well is a, is a whole different kettle of fish exactly. you know it's 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 a huge commitment and um, and I think that was some that was the lesson for us is actually understand what you are good at or what your passion is, and pursue that rather than trying to be everything to everyone. You know, which I think was probably our fault. Mm. I understand you so well because <laughs> I went through exactly the same journey mm. of losing everything, crashing, mm. and mm. and ending up with absolutely nothing and mm. having to start everything from the start and that's when they started my youtube channel mm. and i got to the point where i had to decide what i want to be do, do i want to like go the directions that i did before or mm. want to stay where i am and i decided that i love this and mm. and uh, you guys your comments and uh, like y you made me decide mm. that yeah. that's who i am and what i can do 
probably the best yeah. in my life to show people like Boyd, mm -hmm. show people like Simon, to show all the beautiful community, mm -hmm. a real motorcycle community mm -hmm. that exists and growing and, and young people joining it. And it's not gonna go disappear. The custom motorcycle community can stay here forever. Yeah. <laughs> despite all the rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's a huge thing for us is like being a broad church, like there's, you get that a lot in in kind of the hot rod circles as well as there's like there has to be a certain car has to be the right wheels has to be and it's like those cars are becoming so scarce now that there's no way you're ever going to get an 18 year old doing that you know what i mean so we at our meets we have everything from you know teenagers on groms you know through to kind of 80 year olds on classic bikes through to people my age have just got on their first 125 and are just coming into it and, and, and everyone's welcome because i think as soon as you start saying well, actually, that's not what we're about. Like, and pulling up the ladder behind you and going, no, well, because we, this is this is what we do. You're killing the community. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. the opposite of what we should be doing. Well, she likes to say we shouldn't, but you know we always will. The hollers catch me if the can runs up over the hill. Well, that's how she gets her thrill. Saying that we shouldn't, but she knows we always will. watching and commenting and buying a t-shirt contributing <laughs> to that community too yeah yeah <laughs> thanks for watching guys and i'll see you on the next one <laughs>